Hey guys, welcome to The Max. This morning is going to be a great video. We're going to be talking about 10 things to stockpile that are not food based, but the things that you see that go off the shelf pretty quickly when we hear about, uh, you know, SHTF kind of situation. So make sure you are prepared. A lot of these stockpile items deal with everyday life. So you're using these, but by having extra, it allows you not to have some of the stress that we have been feeling here in America and across the world. So stockpile these things. All these things can be utilized not only to help you, but to barter for other things that you may need over time. So today's video is going to be a go in 10 things that you need to be stockpiling now before it's too late. Things that leave the shelf quick. This video starts right now. Hey guys, welcome to our channel. If you're new to our channel, please go down here, press subscribe and ring the bell and give us a thumbs up. That does help us get into the algorithm and hopefully share our messages across uh, YouTube, Rumble, and every other platform that we may be on. So today's video is gonna be going, as we said in the intro, it's about 10 things that you are needing for sure to stockpile before it gets too late. A lot of these things leave the shelf pretty quickly. You can tell that cows are pretty happy to see me this morning. So these things tend to leave the shelf quicker uh, in a situation where uh, disaster hits or we hear about collapses or we hear about catastrophic events, even if it's storms, all these things can be very valuable to your homestead and to your farm and to your home to stockpile because you're using a lot of these things. You can barter a lot of these things and a lot of these things you may have not thought of, but they're very, very important. So let's start with the first one on the list. The first one is going to be cash. We need to be stockpiling cash in our homes. Not that you don't need to trust a bank, not that you don't need to put all your eggs in one basket and cash out all your accounts. Have a local bank, don't, don't be putting money in a national bank anyway. A bank account that's gonna put whatever money you're needing for a necessity to have. Other than that, stockpile your cash at home or in a place that is safe. Sometimes having cash can be the most important. What if we're in a situation where we can't get to the banks? What if we're in a situation where disaster hits and they close the banks for a certain amount of time? All those things have happened. All those things have been real. We need to understand the value of having cash at home. Now that's number one. Number two kind of goes along with that. We're, we are leaning towards a cashless society, which is not a good thing personally to me because I like cash. I think it's good to have a currency and it's good that people don't know where our money is always being spent. That being said, sometimes cash may not be king. Uh, so let's look at another form of currency before we talk about the bartering items. Number two would be precious metals. We need to be investing in precious metals. Uh, one thing I like about precious metals is the ebb and flow of it, but it still keeps its value. We are seeing a lot of nations repatriate their gold. A lot of their monies are falling at the wayside. Uh, countries like ours that have gotten off the gold standard, we're seeing some devaluation of our currency. When those things start to happen, commodities and real estate and precious metals tends to be what's worth the most. Commodities such as our, our foods and our precious metals and real estate, which is our lands. Now, I'm not a brokerage. I'm not trying to advise you for anything, but also when it comes to your accounts in the stock markets and your retirements, there's nothing wrong with hedging some of that against precious metals. I'm not, I don't, I'm not selling any, I'm not affiliated with any kind of gold or silver, but I look at the, the values of precious metals, not only precious metals, but you know, commodities or real estate. Those are good things to stockpile now. You may not can go buy, you know, a 10 acre parcel. I'm not saying that. I am saying if you can buy a little gold here and there, put it up, stockpile it, put it with your cash, put it in a safe place at your home and know that you've got it because having it tangibly is very, very important. Number three would be seeds. Now we have mentioned seeds. We are a homestead. We are a farming sustainable operation here at our home. You see the barn behind us. You see the farm of animals over here. You see some of the gardens. That's just some things, but we have to understand that we have to have food to take us and to take care of us over the next few years. When money is not available, our food may be scarce or just very, very pricey, but having seeds to grow your own food 
it is key you can you could go down here and, and go to my survival garden seed link or you can go to my host tools link both of those are down here and they are very very economical and you need to buy a seed bank and keep it at your home you can buy the survival seeds and they're, they're sold in packets so if you're dumb to seeds or you don't really know what to grow buy the bundles the 30 50 or 100 seed bundles it tells you how to save the seeds on the back of that too so it's very vital to have seeds have ways to grow your food if you're buying food at a local farmers market that is amazing keep doing that but you are still dependent on that farmer to grow it if you're not able to grow certain things because of where you live that's okay learn to co-op make some other person's property you make in co-op and and you do the gardens and they get some of the benefit too you, you have the harvest it's, there's different ways don't say you can't you can get seeds and you can grow somewhere you need to work together build a community seeds would be number three it is key but you got to eat so seeds are very very important number four is ammo you need to be stockpiling ammo now here's the key Maybe you're not a gun enthusiast like me. Maybe you don't like firearms. Maybe they kind of scare you or maybe you don't like to carry firearms or you're in an area that can't carry firearms. Ammo becomes a very big bartering tool, especially in a situation where we may see a collapse or disaster. We need to see value in firearms and ammo. So I'd say stockpile ammo. Ammo is very economical. You can go pick it up, usually 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars a box. That's a lot cheaper than some of the firearms that you may have. Now you need a firearm, don't get me wrong, but if you can stockpile ammo, especially more your common rounds, they're very valuable to a lot of people. They're going to be valuable to your survival. Maybe working together and co-oping again in a community situation where you're stockpiling certain things, you have another gentleman who may be stockpiling something totally different. We put it together and now we are built up to a great survival situation. Try to stay towards brass ammo. Now I have a lot of steel cased ammo just because it was more economical, especially the last few years. However, if you're like me and you like to think about reloading your ammo, brass is where it's at. So ammo, ammo supplies, making sure you have everything because right now we're still starting to see a manipulation of ammo just like we're starting to see a manipulation of food number five would be petroleum or gas for instance if you're heating your home and propane or natural gas is what you need now natural gas usually is off of feed so you're not buying it you're usually it's usually pumped into your home but in situations where you have gas for your automobile since you need propane because you need to have it for uh, heating your home or your stove we need to have gas stockpiled or propane stockpiled. So here's some options. Say you want to rent a tank from a propane provider. That tank could get you a 300, 400, 500 gallon propane tank at your home. Now, we have an all electric house and we did that on purpose so that way we can utilize the grid when we needed it or we could hook the whole thing up to the supply of a solar or backup generator. Now our backup generator is a propane generator. We have a gas generator and then we have the solar generators that were some of the other videos prior to this one. But by having propane on your grounds, it allows you to take a little stove out there. You could use it for lighting. There's different ways you can use propane. It's very universal and you need to buy it before winter because it's usually a little bit more economical. Now we bought our tank because I don't want to lease anything off our property. But if you can't buy the tank, lease the tank. If you can't afford 350, 400 gallon tanks, that's okay. Uh, we've saved up for a long time to have that. But if you can't, go and start buying those smaller, you know, 7 to 14 gallon filled up propane tanks they may be 40 or 50 dollars but they would be wise to have not only do we have our big tanks we have a lot of those little tanks because they're they're portable it allows us to throw it on a trailer throw it in a car if we had to if we were bugging out or we were needing to get away from our home we can't take a 350 gallon propane tank but we can take our generator and we can take those little portable propane tanks they're very vital along with that would be gas now gas is something that it can get old i mean it could quote get old you need to be buying regular unleaded but also make sure you're not buying any with ethanol in it make sure you're buying one with non-ethanol if you can it's going to cost you a little bit more but to me it seems like it stockpiles better and also will help in your small engines i think about my chainsaw i think about diesel for my tractor i think about my side by side of my vehicle stockpiling fuel of some sort is not a bad thing again it becomes a bartering tool or something that you can use and be very versatile with gas diesel propane whatever fits you 
I want a little bit of everything. Uh, if you can buy bigger tanks and stockpile it on your home, if you have bigger grounds, great. If you're in the city or in urban areas or suburban areas where you may not can stockpile that amount, stop by what you can because it's very good to have petroleum-based products. Number six is caches or caches, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, from wherever you're from. You need to be building caches or buying caches. Now, why I say caches and what are caches? Caches are things that you can hide that are usually sealed up that you can bury and put on different areas of your property or different areas that you are bugging out to or maybe someone else's home. You need to build a community style based approach. You know how you, we always say you can't have all your eggs in one basket. Well, say you have a safe and you have uh, firearms in it, or you have money and you have your precious metals in it, you have food in your home. All of a sudden your home gets ransacked or thieves break in and they steal a lot of things. But having caches or having caches, it allows you to build little sealed items that you can bury in very inconspicuous places around your property or a place that's very vital to you to go to. Now, the best way to build caches, I mean, you can buy them, you can look online, you can buy them on Amazon or our affiliate link, but the best way to do it is just buy like a big pipe, maybe a four to six inch thick PVC pipe. Buy seal and buy caps for that. You can turn around and build several caches where you can put cash, you can put ammo, you can put firearms, you can even put freeze dried food, you can put anything in there to keep it sealed up and dry and bury. You need to do a little research. You need to make sure that you're taking, make sure there's no moisture in there, make sure you have oxygen absorbers or a sealed situation. You're not putting them in wet areas or areas that you can't find. So if we're gonna bury one, we wanna make sure it's buried in front of the X, you know, on the barn. We need to make sure other people know that in our family, our community that's helping us build a stockpile so scenario we don't want that to happen the last thing I want to do is have to bug out or go to a different area or use a cache that we may already have however they're very vital because one day we realize if all of a sudden a collapse or disaster or situation happens we need to have a backup plan bugging out to an area with a cache or having a cache buried somewhere is very vital number seven is hygiene wipes antibacterial wipes they are very very important why do I say they're important if it comes down to the point where water is scarce or we're to a point where our energy is not running and we're wanting to save our, our propane generators or we're wanting to save our solar generators or we don't have running water, it's very important for us to make sure that we are having a way to kind of have some hygiene about us. Now we did a hygiene video and a medicinal video. Both of those are in our playlist dealing with food shortage and food security. But also I'll put those two videos below. Not only do we realize what we're putting in our body is important, what we do on the outside of our body is just as important. Cleanliness is a big deal to health. So antibacterial wipes, hygiene wipes are very good to have. It allows you not to have to focus on just use of water, conserve your water, but also make sure you have a clean body. It also helps you if you have a lot of children like I do, it keeps them clean in a way that uh, we're conserving our water, conserving our energy. It's very vital to have. You would be surprised how quick hygiene and antibacterial wipes leave. We have them not only in our cars, we have them in our bug out supplies, we have stockpiled in our home because it's very vital to have some way to clean our bodies maybe when we don't have water source. I think a lot of people overlook this and this is, comes back to the propane. This kind of comes back to uh, cooking without electricity uh, is a grill a grill, a smoker, a gas grill, a propane grill, a flat top. It's a way to cook without the grid or without electricity. So for me, we have a smoker, we have a grill, a charcoal grill, a big charcoal grill that is handmade. So it's real thick, it's not just a cheap version of that. Then we have a cheap portable grill that you literally can pick up for 30 or $40 at Walmart. And then we also have a propane style grill too. Why do we have three or four different options? Now we do have some wood fire grills too and wood fire options too. We'll talk about that in a different video, such as the rocket stove. But by having a grill of some sort, it allows you to know that you can cook your food or boil your water or heat up whatever you need without the grid. If you have a balcony or you have an outer step or you have a yard or you have a porch, you need to have a charcoal grill or a propane grill or both because they could be valuable to you those portable propane tanks or buying charcoal. Stockpile both of those because it's very important to be able to heat or cook or have fire or have a way to cook in a controlled environment. Now for the people who say, well, I live indoors. I don't have an opportunity to grill. That's okay. Look at the little campfire 
Bunsen burners or look at the little campfire stoves. Now, I would not challenge you to cook inside. I, I think it's dangerous to have propane inside and trying to cook with it. Here's the kicker though. In a situation where your survival is important, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So you could buy one of those little Coleman campfire stoves. You can buy one of those little, uh, little hot plate burners that hooks to your propane. It does not push smoke out. So if you're trying to say, well, you know, I need to cook, but I can't, you know, I can't put a charcoal grill on because I don't want people to see my smoke. I don't want to be in an apartment all of a sudden making a smell. But having a propane version of some of those things like a little Bunsen burner or a little propane burner like a Coleman stove, you can use it. It would not put a smoke or a very uh, heavy atmosphere of combustion in your home. Now, I'm not telling you to go and light a Bunsen burner or a propane stove with all your windows closed. That's stupid, and I would not challenge you to do that. But in a survival situation, you open your windows, you need to put it right next to a window if you can, and try to cook without having the grid. It's good to have that propane and good to have some kind of little campfire stove that you can utilize. Number nine, now we're getting into a little bit more of a stockpiling something that could be vital to you over time. But number nine would be binoculars, making sure you have a good set of binoculars. Now, this may not be for everybody, but I think it's wise to have a way that you can magnify your view in a situation where you may need it. Say you own a property like us, having binoculars and having a night vision binocular set would even be better. It allows you to look over your property and know that you're safe. If we lose a grid or we're in a catastrophic situation, some things may transpire. There may be times where people are trying to uh, come on your property. There may be times where you've got to look over your animals. There may be times that you're just guarding your home and you live right there in town that you just want to make sure that you're safe or you're trying to see far off and see what's coming towards you. You can pick up a pair of binoculars for pretty cheap. Now depending on where you're at, depending on your location, you may want to invest in a better set or you may need night vision binoculars. But it's very good to have magnifying what we can see and making sure that we are able to, to kind of know what's around us. Having situational awareness is key. Binoculars are just a part of that. Add those to your stockpile. You can buy one pair, you can buy two pair, and that's all you need. Put them in your car, put them in your bug out supplies, put them in your home. Make sure you just have them. If you never use them, that's okay. You didn't spend a lot of money, but it's good to have stockpile binoculars. Number 10. Now, this is one that a lot of times people may say, oh, that doesn't pertain to me. You'd be surprised how it can pertain to you. Now, this does depend on the environment that you're in. So the, here's where it's very important. So I want you to hear me out though. Number 10, I would say it's camouflage. Having camo. Now. For me, let's turn you this way. I live in a very green, humid, uh, camouflage oriented area. So my camouflage is gonna look very tree-ish, very foresty, woodsy. Now say you live in the desert and you live in a, a very high climate where there's not a lot of green. I wouldn't challenge you to buy green, woodsy camo. I'd challenge you to buy sand style camo. I would challenge you to do blending in in that facet. Say you live in a very wet and white area because it's snowy and wintry a lot of times. You may want to buy a different style camo that's based on your area. That's very important. Now for you city folks, I'm going to say the same thing to you. It may not be woodsy themed because you'd probably bring attention to yourself, but it may be becoming the gray man. We've talked about this with uh, another video talking about living in the city. Having some form to blend in is very important. So does that mean you need to buy camo? Does that mean you need to buy this white jacket? Does it mean you need to buy this sand colored jacket or this gray jacket to blend in? No, I'm just saying having a situational awareness and having a way that you can blend in, becoming the gray man in town or becoming parts of the woods or becoming parts of your environment is not a bad thing. I actually have several sets. I may have one that's more rain gear oriented to uh, blend in when I'm hunting because that's the time of year that I like to go out in the outdoors. It may be something just having clothes that are not just so bright and over the top, making sure you can blend in because you never know when you may be needing to not be seen. There's times that that's important. It may be just hunting like, like us. I like to hunt. So I want to blend in and utilize that where I can bring food and put it on the table. It may be situations where somebody may be looking for you. It may be situations where you're worried that somebody's looking for you. You never know what may come your way, but having a little camouflage or having some kind of blending in situation to your environment, it's not a bad thing, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is just 10 things. Now, they're kind of all over the board. The reason I make these videos, though, is because I want you to understand that you need to be preparing not only for one thing, you need to be preparing for several things. A lot of times these stockpile videos are focused on food. 
Sometimes they're focused on disaster. Sometimes they're focused on, uh, you know, a collapse situation. This one touches on a little bit of everything. If you're worried about the grid, then you have ways to cook. If you're worried about money and the way the stock market's going, we talked precious metals and cash. If you're worried about bartering or having a way to eat, we've talked about seeds, we've talked about ammo, we've talked about camouflage, we've talked about safety with the binoculars. There's a lot in this video that you can utilize and it can benefit you and your home. Don't be caught off guard if you never need prepping supply. If someone comes on here and says, well, yeah, I've been prepping for 50 years. Nothing's ever happened. You're just another fear monger. No, I'm not. A lot of these things may come true. But like I said, all these 10 items can be used without being in a prepper or, sur or survival scenario. They could be used just to have extra stop by your home to save you money because it's better to buy something now than buy it later because we see the prices of things are going up. From seeds to ammo to gas to binoculars, this video will touch it all. Go down here, check out some of the other videos that we talked about with hygiene, with medical supply, also some more of the stockpile videos. If you're interested in more videos like this, let us know, but go down here and check our playlist because it can be vital to you. None of the things we talk about are just crazy to your budget. You can do this over time, take care of your family, don't get overwhelmed and have hope and know no matter what we're facing, we can do it. For us as Christians, we believe that God is always in control and always watching over us and that Jesus is always the key to prepping and survival. But have these other things because it gives us smart to stockpile, put up, just in case to take care of our family. Thank you guys so much for watching. God bless you. Happy homesteading, y'all.